everyone, I'm Kate Andrews and here's a look at what is going on this week in the news. And we begin in news from the Vatican. The head of Vatican security said Islamic State militants have threatened the Vatican, but there are no indications of any planned attack. Domenico Gianni, the commander of the, and the, of the gendarme and the Pope's chief bodyguard, said that the Vatican gendarme, Swiss guards and the Italian state police are always on high alert. In an interview for the monthly magazine of the Italian state police, Gianni says there is also the risk of action by individuals, which he said is actually more dangerous because it is unpredictable. For months, there have been rumors of threats against the Vatican or Pope Francis by Islamic State militants. Gianni said Pope Francis is aware of the threats, but his only concern is for the faithful. After praying the Angelus in St. Peter's Square March 1st, Pope Francis expressed his dismay over the ongoing dramatic events unfolding in Syria and Iraq. From reports, has more. Speaking to 50,000 pilgrims during his weekly Angelus prayer at St. Peter's Square, Pope Francis called on the crowd to pray for victims of violence in Iraq and Syria. Preghiamo per questi fratelli, queste sorelle che soffrono per la fede in Siria, in Iraq. Preghiamo in silenzio. A concerned Pope Francis said it is necessary to support persecuted Christians in the Middle East with persistent messages of encouragement. Non le dimentichiamo, ma siamo loro vicini e preghiamo insistentemente perché al più presto si ponga fine all'intorilabile brutalità di cui sono vittime. Pope Francis also called for an end to the violence in Venezuela. Anti-government protests have raged for days. Tension has increased since the death of a 14-year-old boy during the demonstrations. The Pope said he prays for him and that the violence will give way to productive dialogue. Esorto tutti al rifiuto della violenza e al rispetto della dignità di ogni persona e della sacralità della vita umana. E incoraggio a riprendere un cammino comune per il bene del paese. It was the second Sunday of Lent, the day the church celebrates the transfiguration of Jesus. That was a moment of glory before Jesus had to pass through Calvary. The Pope recommended that in moments of difficulty, Christians should remember this gospel story. With it, Jesus wanted to send a message of hope to his disciples. Ascoltatelo. In news from the Middle East, 19 Assyrian Christians abducted by Islamic State militants in northeastern Syria have been released. However, at least another 200 remain in captivity. Vatican Radio reported that Osama Edward, who heads the Assyrian Human Rights Network, said the Christians were released because an Islamic protection tax levied on non-Muslims had been paid. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights also reported that an Islamic court had ruled the captives be freed. Edward said those released are in the church of the city of Hesekah. On February 23rd, Islamic State militants raided villages along the Kabur River near Hesekah and abducted Assyrian Christian residents and other minorities. In news from Italy, Pope Francis's yearly Lenten retreat has come to a close. Rome reports take a look back on the week of contemplation for His Holiness. The Pope's week-long Lenten spiritual retreat, along with the Roman Curia, came to a close. Carmelite father Bruno Secondin gave the closing remarks. Speriamo che questa luce del cosmo trovi anche nel piccolo cosmo della nostra anima spazio, accoglienza e faccia splendere la verità a cui ci siamo affacciati. During the five day retreat, the Pope mostly sat among the rest of the Curia, but he did make it a point to thank Father Secondin for leading the retreat. Non è facile dare esercizi ai sacerdoti. Eh? Eh, siamo un po' complicati tutti, ma eh, lei è riuscito a seminare. Che il Signore faccia crescere questi semi che lei ci ha dato. Amid applause, the Pope left the retreat center in the Casa di Vin Maestro in the town of Ariccia. Then he boarded the bus with everyone else to make his way back to the Vatican. This marks the Pope's second Lenten retreat as pontiff. 
Along with him, members of the Roman Curia also took part to dedicate a week to prayer and reflection. The Pope went right back to work after coming back to the Vatican from his retreat. He met with members of an Italian association of Catholic farm, credit, housing and shopping cooperatives, urging them to keep the human person at the center of their priorities rather than profit. He spoke about the risks of high unemployment where workers are easily exploited. He also said they must encourage family life because an economy can never be renewed in an aging society. In addition, he said they must help women fully realize their vocations and participate in the workplace with greater flexibility and services such as childcare. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kate Andrews. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.